day in and day out, a lot of companies are selling, you know, a wide range of software products, and they claim some sort of security is built in because it's the uh, slogan of the of the of this decade. You know, now everyone is so aware of uh, security. What are at least four or five key checkpoints from a consumer perspective, both in retail and um, you know enterprise products, uh, which one should see that these are like the essentials to have from security standpoint, you know, without which we shouldn't even consider those products. As you said, like someone from outside should be selling the security services, it should be inbuilt. Uh, Simple is always more secure, right? So, if you think about it, my experience of an iPhone versus a Windows phone is just simpler, right? Things just work together. Usually, that's an indicator that the teams that build different parts of that operating system and application actually work together. What hackers do is they find gaps between things. So, a simple, elegant experience where you don't see any obvious flaws is generally more secure. Hello everyone, we saw a number of uh, non-profits doing a lot of activism in the Bay Area. But the non-profit Gitpro is way different. It is a unique non-profit organization that Khande Rauji has in Silicon Valley since many many years. And this non-profit has been doing a fantabulous work in supporting the tech professionals have their own startups. Let's learn a little more about Gitpro and also have some insights into the conference that we are having today with multiple uh, speakers and a very enthusiastic audience who are very interactive. Welcome Khande Rauji to Yo India TV with me Jasleen Khanuja and tell us a little more about this wonderful organization Gitpro. Yeah, Gitpro stands for Global Indian Technology Professionals Association. So it is for professional and self-development of Indian tech professionals and their entrepreneurship and their contribution back to community both US and India. Uh, we work on various aspects. We conduct uh, informational sessions. We also conduct a uh, startup uh, boot camp and entrepreneurship uh, session. We also represent uh, their interest in policy matters. For example, working on the immigration related issues. Uh, we have certain programs uh, that related to their contribution back to community. When we say contributing back to community, people always think that time and money, that you do some charity, you give some money and that. But tech professionals are based at their skills. So our concept of giving back is that whatever they are based at, whether their skills, their management, their leadership, and uh, they can contribute and they can make bigger difference into that. So in this today's conference, uh, it is our 8th annual conference, we had three parallel tracks. One was artificial intelligence, second was trending or emerging technologies and third is a startup bootcamp. In these uh, three sessions, we had 33 speakers, 26 different topics. Uh, in this, uh, we had about 11 entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs. We had uh, three venture capitalists, uh, 13 different leaders of different uh, statures, and then uh, architects and uh, uh, machine learning, that type of experts. So pretty good from the speaker's point of view. Overall people, they can network with all these uh, professionals and really have the very close interaction on various topics. Wow, that was pretty exhaustive and as you will go over 
that those number of learned people who have been making their presentations today you will see there there has been sharing of a lot of enriching content from all of these hot topics related to technology There are new models out there which can consume all of these various data points and make holistic predictions as doctors do. Foundational models, I think, will get us there just in the very near term in the next three years as well. A second great point is where I do believe one of the key constraints for companies and developers in the health AI space has been getting access to training data. But again, with the use of a lot of these foundational and generative AI models, uh, synthetic data is really getting awesome at this point in time. With substitutes or supplements, at least the need for the training data or the dependency that a lot of the developers have on the health systems to gather the training data. Right? Even at Caliber, we are utilizing a lot of synthetic data to train our models, which reduces again our dependency on external entity to kind of gather training data on a regular basis. And then the last one that I'm proud of this discussion with is that the regulatory reimbursement gap uh, is narrowing as we speak. And technology is an ever-changing space. It's one of the most dynamic things that we have seen and most dynamic evolutions in human mankind yeah. um, and generative AI has made it even more complex so or simple or simple oh wow yeah that's a good take too yeah, so tell us a little more about your your opinion on all of this yeah so just like if you want to write a letter you can just type it and then it can write it for you if you want to write a poem you can get a poem compose if you want to write essays or summarize book all these different tasks related to the languages art, uh, artificial intelligence particularly generative ai is actually very good at and uh, right now we are at the crossroads ai is going to be everywhere Every, each and every industry will have artificial intelligence, whether it's a medical science, fintech, whether it is uh, education, whether it's in, uh, 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 legislatives or uh, 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 enterprises, everywhere it is going to be there. So it is very important. Today, in fact, uh, we had this morning, keynote was uh, India's uh, electronics and IT minister, uh, Raju Chandrasekhar, and uh, he uh, himself also from the entrepreneurship background and telecom background, he emphasized that uh, India recognized uh, the importance of AI. Rather, he mentioned that uh, Modi ji uh, said that AI for India and India for AI. AI at the, on, at the outset, we consider as a kinetic enabler of the digital economy. We think it's a very, very important and valuable layer on the progress that has been made by our startups and innovation ecosystem over the last several years around the consumer internet and the data economy. And AI, as Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji described it about two years ago, or a year and a half ago, is AI for India and India AI and we have branded the artificial intelligence programs and schemes and focus in India as India AI. And India AI in a, in a broad nutshell consists of a partnership between the government on one hand, the large network of academic institutions on the other hand, startups and industry. And this partnership today is building out the building blocks of AI uh, for, and for India AI and starting with a collection and curation of one of the most diverse and largest collection of data sets ever available to the research and startup community in India which is the India data sets program. So that way is a way is going to be pretty much seriously considered that uh, how it can be used for uplifting many of the policies or many of the interactions particularly the language model that for charge char, char, uh, GPT one of the case uh, actually the foundational technology behind the chart uh, GPT is called uh, large language models and it can be very good for any kind of language problems including uh, teaching training creating the training contents for education point of view and also for the translations uh, so from one language to another language so India being such a large with the diverse languages 
we need those kind of foundational technology where people can just translate from one to another so speech to speech without any delay those type of translation can happen even the scripture we have so much wealth from one language and another language and then people are not aware about that so that also can be democratized so there are wonderful things it can be done with this uh, generative ai and these are just one aspect of i said but it's it's amazing it's, it's a vast topic there are, yeah, I mean, there, are, there are always some uh, poison pills and guard drills and all that thing we would need to put that but uh, yeah there are plus uh, much more overwhelming than negatives as of now so the problem with market sizing that all VCs have is we don't quite know when we see this whether it's a 20 million dollar problem or it's a 20 billion dollar problem because nobody really knows what a company can go into right so think about salesforce the market for turning leads into opportunities even today is less than a million dollars right this is not that much value you could frankly do it much better with a spreadsheet than you can do it in salesforce but the value for a cloud based platform that can run all workflows in your company is basically unlimited and this is the reason why market is so hard so when you're coming into a vc's office and you're pitching this you have to simultaneously be realistic enough that you can't say hey i'm building a desalination factory and my product is this at the same time you have to tell them if i succeed here is my road map to a 10 million dollar tax team i think is in some ways the obvious part right um the only thing i would say about the team is you have to find why this team is exceptionally suited to turn this into a bigger market and problem so two people you know you have lots of friends who could all bottle water and sell it for a dollar in fact you can do it at home too buy some bottled water and put a sticker on it but you all know that there are few people that you know who could turn that into big business because maybe they worked in an airline industry and then catering maybe they worked in you know food and beverages so what makes a team great is how suited they are to that particular problem right so in our case obviously we think you know being a cloud based service and data security and privacy was really my job to this so so you, the team has to be great for people to be able to believe that you can do this now you can prove the team is great in two ways one is you've done it before so as you get older that becomes the criteria but many times if you haven't done it before the fact best way to assess a team is actually unfortunately by the clarity of your slides clarity of your thinking and the amount of progress you're making in a short period of time so you know there has been a massive digital revolution in india especially in the modi era and silicon valley as you know everyone uh, believes uh, everything comes here first in fact every, everything develops here first and then goes out to the rest of the world so what in your opinion you being here in silicon valley from many many years and being in the field and also uh you know closely seeing what's happening back home in india uh what is one great um, uh, digital revolution uh, product which is being used in india and what's one great thing in silicon valley that you really feel proud of in india actually has uh, uh, under leadership of modi ji india has come up with a, this uh, digital stack which has the identity framework which is a aadhar card which is a biometric which we don't have it actually we have social security number but we are not having biometric uh, this one then there is also digital locker which also us doesn't have it means we don't have a official place we have dropbox we have google drives and etc but we don't have a place where we can lock our uh, private uh, documents or there third thing what i observed is that india has actually bypassed this the whole uh, credit card uh, uh, what i will say that era uh, i recently went to india even in the uh, if you go on the uh, roads there are this uh, uh, sailors like even the bicycle repair person they also have this qr code after buying for every any like a 5 rupees 10 rupees 15 rupees bring out your mobile and payment is done 
Yeah, Paytm is very popular. It's like you don't have so look at it. So that way, I think that India has actually surpassed that. The you don't have, we have to carry the, the credit cards, right? We have to do that thing. But India doesn't need nobody needs those things so much. Is so I think there is the innovation and there is the digital digitalization and uh, um, from the mobile population point of view, India has actually surpassed. You see on that slide, this horizontal axis is scale of companies addressed in the domestic market, and the vertical axis is of companies addressed in the global market. So this is uh, China was far you know, on the domestic axis. There are several companies. This was first prepared in 2014, uh, 15 that time frame, and uh, so at that time, we thought India was quite a bit behind China, no question about it, in the domestic market but higher than China. If China also in that doesn't have too many companies that have scaled substantially and addressed in the global markets. And there are of course some consumer companies like TikTok and others, but by and large they are not. They don't have companies like Postman, they are in Freshworks and all of those right? And US of course the large domestic and the global market. So our view was India is the only country over a period of time that can look more like US. Uh, and that curve, uh, so I think I have a point there on where India is today. Uh, it's as the local economy grows, the local GDP grows from at that time 2 trillion now to 3.5 to hopefully a 10 trillion in the next decade or you know, bigger. So there's a large domestic market opportunity, and at the same time, the companies are just in local markets, it's extraordinary. And so today, people don't question that. But back in 2014, 15, and we also had to put out a vision of what's possible, right? When we are talking to the executives here at Salesforce, Oracle, and the VCs, they weren't paying that much attention to India. I mean, today it's almost an unfair advantage for your entrepreneur in your background. And uh, increasingly, entrepreneurs coming out of India, like these young people. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a very exciting time. One thing in Silicon Valley that impresses you. Silicon Valley is just continuous startup culture, innovation, risk taking, entire ecosystem of uh, even taking risk not just by the people but also from the uh, from the uh, VCs and uh, people are always innovative. Means if you really look at it, lot of this software driven innovation that happen in Silicon Valley. So that definitely is a very important uh, uh, thing to consider. simple questions that all of us need to start with. I think the first question is what are the real problems that we are trying to solve? I think there was a lot of talk on that uh, earlier today. Uh, the second one is how will we know that we solve that problem? And sometimes they get, this particular question gets a little murky because uh, having very clear metrics uh, and having a complete driver tree of how those metrics ladder up is super critical because uh, otherwise, you know, uh, you can end up claiming success, but the success may be because of market forces or other things, or you know, you might have done all the right things, and maybe the success didn't happen because of things, things which are not within your control. So, I think having very clear uh, metrics and uh, success metric is super critical. Uh, and then, you know, as we go into the whole process of iteration, like how will we test, learn, and iterate, uh, and how do we improve the experience from a from a leaky water bottle, I guess, to the best looking water bottle, uh, is is I think is, is is a path that we need to. So, your organization Gitro has also been training people, helping them out to progress into the startup culture and. Um, tech entrepreneurship so tell us a little more about that and how can people register yeah so we do uh, information sessions uh, we also do mentorship to uh, India various colleges etc our site is gitpro g-i-t-p-r-o dot o-r-g so they can go over there and register wonderful so any final message to all the viewers of Yo India TV I think uh, we all need to be part of this vibrant uh, culture. Uh, we are well known for our uh, integrity, our skills, 
uh, we are innovative uh, we need to take more risk we also need to contribute back uh, to the community and not just in india but in us also in us still there is a digital divide there are people there are uh, uh, where we can contribute back we need to be active in the community we also need to be active in the policy makers because we are here we are uh, american citizens we are contributing into that economy but we need to take uh, interest in the policies which are concerning to us uh, that would really make Uh, not only our life but our future generations life better perfect and i hope you got a lot of takeaways from this conference and from the conversation with mr khande rao so keep learning and keep watching your india tv for more infotainment i just lean khanuja would like to sign off from san jose state university from this wonderful git pro conference for now for next time we will meet again in some nice event bye for now